Now we're going to look at minimization problems, standard minimization problems in which the simplex method can be used. So that's going to be the goal of our problem here, and it's going to be done in a matter of three or four videos because we have a lot to talk about here. So first of all, this is what a standard minimization problem looks like. First of all, there has to be a function that you're minimizing, and that is this objective function right here. Along with that, the coefficients of all the variables in the objective function have to be non-negative. So there we have that. Also, look at the constraints. Now, the coefficients of all the variables are non-negative, just like before. All of the constraints have to have greater than or equal to's, and all coefficients and numbers on the right-hand side must be also non-negative. And, of course, you also have your non-negativity constraints. So how does this get, how does simplex method work with this? Because we can't use slack variables. Slack variables are added to the left-hand side in order to bring it up to the maximum limit of the constraint. We can't do that with greater than or equal to. So what we're going to do is explore a different problem called the dual. And the dual says the maximum value, value that comes from the maximization problem is the same as the minimum value from the original minimization problem. So once we have the dual problem set up, we know that finding its maximum is going to yield the same value as finding the minimum of this minimization problem. Did I say minimization enough here? So first thing we have to do is convert. So I'm going to write this problem in, what's, in what I like to call the matrix form. And the matrix form looks similar to the simplex tableau, except we don't include slack variables yet. So here's what happens. I'm going to write the constraints first. So I'm going to have 1, 1, 1. And instead of a slack variable column, we're just going to put an augment and a 100 on the other side. So for the next row, we're going to have 2, 1, 0 with a 50. And we're going to put the objective function downstairs. Now, here's the way that's going to work. This is still a 2, this is still a 1, this is still a 3. I could put a w over there, but I'm just going to, but it's not going to be called w once we get to the dual problem. So it's going to put a big x here. I think your book uses a 0. There's all kinds of things you can use there. Turns out whatever is in that bottom right-hand corner doesn't matter. It's the objective row. So then what we do, we take the transpose of this matrix. Remember when we transpose, we interchange the rows and columns. So the ones across and then the 100 becomes ones down and then 100. And likewise with the second row. And likewise with the last row. And notice that this X stays in the same spot. So I still have the same scenario here. I'm going to put an augmenting line here and I'm going to put a line across the bottom row there. And that's my new linear programming problem, but this is called the dual. So we're going to reconstitute this one as a maximization problem. So what are we maximizing? Well, the bottom row corresponded to the objective function before. Same thing here, except I'm going to call it Z this time. So remember, Z is the letter that's kind of reserved for max problems. W we use for min problems. And this is going to be equal to... 100x1 plus 50x2. Okay, and what are we subject to? Well, we get that from the other lines. So the first row tells me that I'm going to have x1 plus 2x2 is less than or equal to 2. So going back to the standard maximization techniques, x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 1. And x1 plus 0x2 is less than or equal to 3. And naturally, we have our non-negativity constraints. So there is the maximization problem, the dual. So the idea is we find the maximum value that comes from this problem, which we already know how to do from simplex method because we just spent a ton of time doing that. And then apparently once we get the maximum value from the simplex method, it's going to correspond to a solution for the minimization problem that we were trying to solve. So that's where we'll pick this up next time. So be sure to stay tuned. Thank you so much.